All right, welcome to second semester. What I'm going to do today is review the seven steps of the teaching progression. We're going to see how much you remember from teaching elementary mathematics. Who knows the very first thing when we progress through a chapter, we progress through a topic, where do we begin? What is the first step of the teaching progression? Yes? Terminology. Correct. Terminology. Terminology. What did I say? What's the key little phrase that I want you to remember? Yes? Use it. Use it. Okay. Terminology. And the phrase is use it. First of all, what is terminology? What is terminology? Terminology is the words that you will use in your particular class and at your particular level. Now the next lecture for Friday is I'm going to take these seven steps and lower them or adjust them to primary level. If you look on your syllabus you can see that's the next lecture is the seven steps at primary level. So what I want to do today then is go through each of these and hit some key things and generalities about them. Then we will apply this to primary level. So terminology, that's when you define the words that you will use at, in your particular class and at your particular level. I remind you of John Milton Gregory's Law of Language. That's going to be especially true at primary. All right, so terminology, remember the phrase, use it. Terminology is the words that uh, you will use in a particular class and at a particular level. Next, I want to give you two reminders. Two reminders. Keep in mind that you're teaching primary. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying not to apply it because we're going to do that next lecture. But keep in mind you are teaching primary. You have to be specific with your um, words. And you have to make sure they know what you're talking about. They're very literal. Here's my two reminders. First reminder. Using terminology must be deliberately planned and practiced. You have to make yourself do it. Deliberately plan and practice and be aware. Be aware of your terminology. The younger your students are, um, the less familiar they are with arithmetic, the more you have to be careful. So deliberately plan and practice using terminology. Be aware of it. Secondly, enforce proper terminology with the students. When the students answer, correct them and have them restate it with the proper term. So enforce terminology with the students. That's the first step in our progression. We have to all be speaking the same language. Step two, the next thing that we do with as we start a new chapter or a new topic, what's next? Facts, yes. Facts, okay. Facts, what phrase do I want you, it's not a phrase, what word do I want you to remember? Automatic. Yes, automatic. Facts must be automatic. What are facts? First thing. Facts is the second step as we proceed through our new chapter, or our new section, new topic. Facts are information. Facts include the information necessary to do basic arithmetic operations. These are facts necessary, information necessary to do the arithmetic operations. We're going to be teaching uh, primary students to add, subtract, and multiply. A uh, smidge division in second grade. What facts do I need? I need the addition families at least through 12. 
but actually, no, that's multiplication, I'm sorry. And the, the addition families, we do the addition families through um, 18, and the subtraction factor, fac, families through 18. Does anybody know why we do the subtraction families through 18? Because you have to borrow. And the biggest number that you have to borrow is an 8. I mean, borrow 4 is an 8. 18 minus 9. If it's a 9, you don't have to borrow. Because 9 minus 9 is 0. 9 minus 8 is 1, etc. Anyways, we'll come back to that. So facts. This is the information necessary to do basic arithmetic operations, including addition and subtraction families, multiplication tables, measurement conversion facts, terms, definitions, formulas, etc. All right, with facts, two reminders. Two reminders about addition facts. Two things to remember from first semester. First of all, drill must be done when? Must be frequent. It should be done daily. This means even in small classrooms and even in home school settings. Drill must be done daily. Drill is essential to knowing the facts automatically. So drill must be done daily. And the second thing is that drill is essential. Drill should be done daily. Drill should be essential. I added a third one last hour with the intermediate class. I'm going to add it again. The third one is that there's a balance. Okay, we balance between time used or time that the time that we're taking and the idea of not being rote. Okay, there's a balance with drill. We don't just drill to drill. It's not like being on a treadmill, going nowhere. Okay. <coughs> Third step. What's the third step in the teaching progression? Third and fourth, sometimes we interchange them. This is the heart of the lesson. What? Concept this is number three. Procedure is number four. This is the heart of the lesson. Concept and procedure. This is primary math, and we're going to spend time on concept because what are you doing? You are really teaching concepts. You are laying foundations. You have to get them to understand basic, basic principles. What are, what's the phrase for concepts? What's the phrase? Very good. Success is understanding. Success is understanding. We talked about this first semester. We have to strive to reach the student's understanding. First of all, what is concept? Concept. Concepts are principles, laws, theorems, foundational ideas that govern how math procedures and processes are done. Concepts are principles, laws, we can even call them theorems, basic, basic foundations that govern how math procedures and processes are done. All right, the biggest law of arithmetic. Does anybody remember what it is? And the idea here with concept is the fact that concept understand, um, answers the question, why? From first semester, let me give you some reminders. See if you can come up with a concept. Um, remember, concept explains why the procedure works. What is the most important law of arithmetic, especially at primary level? I'll give you a hint. This law tells you why you have to have a common denominator. This law tells you why you have to line up the decimals so that you're adding like places. What's the law? 
The law of addition, you can only add like quantities. This is a concept. This is a principle of how addition works. Why you can only add um, you can only add like or common denominators. You can only add like places, so you have to line up your decimal point. You can only add like units. That is concept. Can we, in primary level, can we add inches to feet? Remember? All right, so concept. Success is understanding. Concept. Concepts are the principles, laws, thir um, theorems, basic foundational knowledge that governs how math procedures and processes are done. Reminders. Reminders with concept. First of all, concept is paramount. Concept is paramount to understanding. What did we say last semester about memorization? I told you it was a poor teaching technique and a poor learning strategy. Why? It is temporary. It leads to confusion. So concept is paramount. Memorization is a temporary learning tool at best. It's much, much better to what? Understand why, then you don't have to remember the hows. Okay. This is especially true of college students. It comes back to haunt you. Okay, I show the intermediate class this. Do you know how many times I've seen this in my college math class? Is that true? And we even remember to reduce it. Do you add the numerators and add the denominators? Well, you do in multiplication. You do multiply. Right? You multiply across. Do you do that with addition? No, it violates the law of addition. So concept is paramount. It's essential to understanding in contrast to memorization, which is temporary at best. Memorization is a poor learning technique, which makes it a poor teaching tool, whichever you want to call it poor teaching method. The next thing about concepts is that concepts are unifying. What do I mean by concepts being unifying? They're going to put problems together. They're going to be able to use concept to show parallels. You already know how to do this. Okay, you already should know that you can't add unlike quantities. So you can't add unlike denominators. You have to get a common denominator first. Okay, so concepts are unifying. They unify different. Maybe you can even put that in quotation marks. They unify different math problems and procedures. So then there's less for the students to have to remember. Going back to the Memorization. Memorization is for facts. Memorization is not for procedure. So we have to teach concept. Procedure. Let's keep moving. Procedure. Concept is the why. Procedure is the how. Right? What did I ask you to do or remember with procedure? What's the phrase? Yes, one at a time, please. Procedure, one at a time, please. What are procedures? Procedures are the methods or steps of doing the actual arithmetic process or problem. They're the methods 
or steps of doing the actual math arithmetic process or problem. By the way, math is not the same as arithmetic. Math is all mathematics. Arithmetic is what we commonly call math in grade school. So procedures are the methods or steps of doing the actual arithmetic process or problems. Two things to remember. Procedures must be solidified by concept or they will be confused. Procedures must be solidified by concept or they will be confused. Okay? And then next, don't overwhelm your students with too many procedures or steps at once. One at a time, please. We're going to talk about this at primary level, but this is for sure important for the primary students. Next. Does anybody know what's next? Um, you're not going to be doing this a whole lot in primary, but we're going to finish our progression. Yes? Expansion. Expansion. <coughs> Expansion. I think I'm going to change the phrase here because the other one's kind of boring. So I'm going to change the phrase. That's not a phrase. That's a slang word. What is that word? Gotcha. Why did I decide to change that? Because if you haven't taught concept if you haven't solidified your procedure with your concept, when is it going to come back to haunt you? Expansion. Expansion is going to be confusing and difficult and frustrating if you don't understand the, um, the concepts, you don't understand what you're doing with a few digits. What's going to happen when you add more digits? So this is where um, expansion is going to be where your prior teaching is going to catch up with you. Okay, that's why even in intermediate math, you still have to go back and teach basic addition concept. Okay, so anyways, expansion, what is it? Now, first of all, what is expansion? Expansion is when you add steps or procedures to problems or use larger numbers with more digits in your problems. So we're going to either or add steps to your problems or use larger numbers with more digits in your problems. This really is not a primary issue, but I guess it is because you're going to be doing it with number concepts. You're going to be adding more places. You will expand just not as much as you're going to be doing in the upper grades. So I guess that is an example of primary expansion, adding more places when you're teaching place value. You're going to start with just the units period and then add more places. So expansion is when you add steps or procedures to your problems or you use larger numbers with more digits in your problems. Two things to remember. First of all, procedure not reinforced by concept is difficult to expand. Gotcha. Okay. Procedures not solidified by concepts are difficult to expand. Procedures not solidified by concept are difficult to expand. Secondly,
it with expansion. Expansion can be tedious and frustrating if basic concepts are not mastered. That's why I decided to say gotcha. When you start expanding into harder problems and bigger numbers, you're going to see if you adequately taught prior concepts and procedures. Number six. What's the sixth thing? What's that? Problem areas. What did we say about problem areas? Don't ignore them. Don't ignore them, because guess what? They won't go away. Problem areas. Don't ignore them. They won't go away. They're going to come back to haunt you, just like expansion. Don't ignore them. What, is, what are problem areas? First of all, what are problem areas? Problem areas are situations where procedure and or con concept is new, difficult, or confusing. These are um, situations where the procedure or the concept is new, that's going to be the case with primary, difficult or confusing. Two things to remember about problem areas. First of all, identify and attack problem areas. A second idea, problem areas are, I'm going to use the word perpetual, they reoccur year after year after year. And not just, I don't mean with the students themselves, that they keep missing the same problems. What I mean is they're perpetual in your class. Every year the same problem areas come up. Every year when you're teaching fractions you're going to have problems with people confusing the same two concepts. You're going to have the same problems occurring. That happens in this class too. The same problems occur year after year. People don't really change that much. Okay, so problem areas are perpetual. The same problems occur each year, even with the new students. Okay, last one. What's the last step? Yes, everybody's favorite application, otherwise known as? What's everybody's favorite thing in their homework to do? The story problems. So application, good old story problems. Application, what did I want you to remember about application? <coughs> story problems, they're easy. Let's do a double underline. Story problems. They're easy. First of all, what are story problems? Story problems are when you have, you're using, when you're using basic skills to solve real life problems. Or we try to make up real life, quote unquote, situations to apply our basic skills to. So this is when we use basic skills to solve actual problems or more real life problems. So we put a little story there to make a real life situation and you've got yourself application. So application, story problems, they're easy. Story, uh, application is when you use basic skills to solve actual real life problems or actual problems in real life situations. Application, first of all, 
application, success applying skills goes back to what? Understanding concept. So story problems, success in solving story problems is directly related to understanding of basic concepts. And you need to use techniques to get students to think through a problem. That's the problem with story problems. You have to think. You can't follow rote steps. The last thing about story problems is always require your students to keep their answer in context. If it's dollars and cents, it has a dollar sign. If it's feet, it has to be quote unquote labeled feet. Always require your students to put their answers in context. It's a real life situation. So we're dealing with money, they have to use dollars and cents. We're dealing with size or distance, we have to use feet, miles, or whatever. So there's the seven steps that we covered for semester. Terminology, use it. Facts should be automatic. This is paramount, isn't it? Success is understanding. If you've ever been on the other side of understanding, you know how paramount it is. Procedure, one at a time, please. Don't overwhelm your students with too many steps at all at once. Expansion, this is where you're gonna get caught if you failed here. Problem areas, don't ignore them. They won't go away. They'll get bigger and you'll perpetuate them year after year after year. And then application, good old story problems. Actually, they're pretty easy. The last thing I wanna do with the time that we have remaining, which is about seven minutes, right? Seven or minutes, let's do a review of the math principles. We had seven of these. So I wanna go through them very quickly um, because we are gonna apply them to primary. So these are steps of how we proceed through a new concept or in a new chapter every time we start doing something we're going to proceed through it in this way maybe not sequentially but these ideas first general math teaching principle that I want to review from first semester is drill on purpose for a purpose on purpose for a purpose. Let me just make a few comments with each one of these. Drill on purpose for a purpose. Okay, I guess I'll put a period behind it since it's an imperative. Drill on purpose for a purpose. One thing that I want you to remember from first semester about drill, and we'll be doing drill because drill is very important for primary, is the idea of appropriate. When you think about drill, think about it being appropriate. If you remember from first semester, which apparently you don't, think about drill. It needs to be appropriate to the lesson, remember? It needs to be appropriate to the student's level. We're not just there going, through, don't go through the motions of drill. Keep your drill appropriate. All right, it needs to be appropriate to the lesson, to what you're teaching, it needs to be appropriate in level. It needs to be appropriate to the student's needs. And it needs to be appropriate in duration. How long you do it every day and how long you stay on the same concepts, the same facts. Remember that. Drill on purpose for a purpose. Don't go through the motions. Principle number two. Another imperative. Teach principles. Not problems. You're not there as a teacher to say, okay, this is how you do this problem, this is how you do that problem, this is how you do this problem. No, you're teaching principles. How mathematic, mathematics works. Why you do what you're doing. Yes, you're going to be teaching steps and procedures, but it's not supposed to be this collection of tricks to remember. 
When they see this, they do this. What is that going back to? Memorization. We don't like memorization in math class, okay? Except for facts. So teach principles, not problems. Um, we talked about this first semester. I told you to find the underlying principle or law and teach it. And with primary, you're going to be teaching from scratch, let's say. <laughs> Remember, success comes from understanding the principles behind the procedures that you're teaching. Teach principles, not problems. Okay? Memorization is not learning. Number three, always proceed from the known to the unknown. <coughs> we could also say always proceed from the familiar to the unfamiliar or from the known to the unknown. What's the word that I want you to associate with this principle? It starts with a T. It's my favorite math teaching technique word. And you don't remember it. It starts with a T. Okay. There's, it's a, there's this game, you have a pole and you have a ball. Tether, 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 tether. You have to tether your new information to your old information. That's how your brain works. You have to put things in context. Tether. You have to form associations. You have to show them how it fits with what they already know. You don't start over here in left field with this obscure concept that has nothing to do with anything else. Tether, tether. Uh, number four. Approach problems creatively. There's going to be lots of problems. I don't mean problems as in math problems to work. I mean in mistakes and problem areas. Approach problems creatively. What I want you to remember from principle number four is that mistakes are opportunities for learning. Mistakes our opportunities for learning. We're going to use students' mistakes to cover problem areas. We're going to use student mistakes to draw attention to and correct them. Okay, number five, keep students working, working working. Oh, can't fit anymore. Keep students working, working, working. The word here I want you to remember is the word practice. Understanding math and being able to, and having math skills requires years of practice. Okay? Years and years of practice. Just like playing an instrument, playing the piano, etc. Principle number six, review, review, review. Isn't repetition the key to learning? You have to put things in contest. You have to keep reinforcing, reinforcing, reviewing, reviewing. Remember the Latin phrase, ad nauseum. Last, effectively use all of your tools and all of your time. Use, effectively use all of your tools. You want to be employing different tools and all of your time. And not wasting time takes a lot of practice, especially at primary. It's going to take them 10 years to write down their homework. Not quite, but at least 10 minutes. They're very slow and you have to be patient and you have to have routines in place. So effectively use all of your tools and all of your time. So especially with primary, you want to be using visuals. And what else do we use at primary level? 
that you have flashcards, yes, that you have to use so students can see the concept you're teaching. You have to make one at the end of the semester. Manipulatives.